Hey guys, thanks for joining today and watching this video. This is my one week review of the Patagonia Danner foot tractor wading boot. Now a couple weeks ago, I put up a video of a 12 year review of my Sims G4 wading boot. In that video, I threw a couple hints out at the next boot I'd like to go to, which is these. And my wife caught wind and got me a pair of these as a surprise for Father's Day. So, lucky me. Turns out that the week after, I actually had the week off as well. So I got to spend a week uh, with the family camping on the Blackfoot River, doing some fishing there uh, near Missoula, Montana, as well as some time fishing on the Madison River between $3 Bridge and Reynolds, which, for those of you who haven't been there, is a great place to put a boot to its test. That river is like, in that section, it's, it's like trying to wade on basketballs. Some have really good traction, some have terrible traction. Uh, I definitely ate it once or, <laughs> once or twice on the river. And actually, I watched a guy upstream for me uh, fall completely in uh, and start going downstream a little bit. He was able to get himself out, pretty young buck, uh, popped out, but unfortunately, I watched his flies float down, down river from me. So poor guy, he was okay. He was not wearing these boots, so these passed the test there. So let's talk about why I decided to go to these boots. Uh, one of the things I always joke about with wading boots is that they're terrible. They look terrible. Uh, oftentimes, you know, a lot of brands, they, they kind of look like shitty basketball shoes um, or boots that should be worn in space. Uh, if you look at corkers, like I, I personally don't like the look of corkers. They look very futuristic. They're very lightweight and they're actually a really good boot. I used to have a, a pair of like these sandals I'd wear, um, which, which did really well. Um, and Sims, you know, Sims has a pretty specific look, a lot of grays, a lot of blacks, um, even in their newer boots, these obviously these are 12 years old. Um, but yeah, they, the, their looks have, wading boots in general over the past decade have looked very similar. These, on the other hand, are, are a little bit of a new look. Um, to me, they look kind of like your heritage leather boot. Um, obviously, Danner is, you know, this is a partnership with Danner, um, who makes leather boots, uh, heritage leather boots. And that's exactly what these are, right? We have a, a nice leather, leather siding in front, um, as well as this kind of canvas side, which is pretty popular these days on boots. Um, this canvas is nice, keeps it lightweight. This leather is good, keeps it, keeps it pretty, pretty, um, pretty tough. Uh, although I did put some, some dents in it and some scratches this week, which I'll get into in a little bit when I talk about wear and things like that. Um, I love the look of these. Again, like I'm a, I'm a heritage boot type of guy. I've got a couple pairs of those um, that I wear uh, for work and things like that. So when I saw these, I, like I had to have them. Um, I, I say that, but obviously the price tag was a little bit of a, of a jump there. But you buy something, you spend this much money on something so that it lasts for years. Um, you know, I spent, I think, 250 bucks on these and they lasted 12 years. So if I can get 12 years out of these, I think that's a definite win. Um, but yeah, I think the boot looks great. The other color that this comes into is actually a different type of boot. Um, it's, well, it's, it's the same boot, uh, but there's a little bit of a difference in that. So the other boot, um, is for saltwater flats and things like that. So typically in those cases, you're walking on sand. So you have a little bit of a different sole structure in this. So if you, it's gonna be hard to see in this video, but there's actually like a pretty good flex to this. And in that, that saltwater version, it's a little bit harder because you're not, you don't need that flex in your boot when you're walking on these large rocks, right? If you think about that flex in the boot when you're watching, walking on these walks or rocks, excuse me, you want as much contact surface as you can get. Uh, so you can increase your friction. So in these boots, for example, these are like rock solid. <laughs> You're not going to bend these uh, very well on the inside. Obviously, I can flex them this way because I've worn them for 12 years. But these are hard. I mean, you can you can hear that, and that's a major issue. Like when when I bought these, when I the guy was like, "Look, you're a skinny buck, dude. You 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 should put some metal in that um, because you're going to slick. You don't have the the weight to really get the flex and that that." contact surface on rocks. So that was kind of my concern going to these, um, but you know, it's a little bit of a different sound there. And there's definitely a little bit more give in this boot sole. These are both Byram soles, I should say. This is like what 12 years of difference in, you know, wading boot technology is, or at least sole technology. Um, I use the word technology there, but there actually a lot goes into these, um, which we won't jump into in this video because I don't, I, I can't really support that. Sorry. Um, but yeah, so, uh, it kind of gets me into my next, um, next, 
this section here. Well, first let me talk about the first thing that I, I when I saw these boots, uh, my major concern was ankle support. So again, I'm gonna jump back to these Sims. Um, and what you see in a lot of, of wading boots out there is a lot of cushion, a lot of firmness in that ankle support. So when I saw this boot, I was a little bit concerned because it didn't have that nice thick um, siding. It looked pretty flimsy because you've got that uh, you, you've, you've got that canvas on the sides. But actually where your ankle sits, which is down around this area, you do have some good support um, from this leather, uh, reinforced leather right here. And I felt, you know, yesterday walking around on the Madison, but the ankle support was, was phenomenal. Um, and it, it really felt really good. I got in a couple of situations where I slipped off a few rocks yesterday. And it's one of those, you know, you get your foot and kind of like when you're playing basketball and you kind of come down on some guy's foot when you're jumping for a rebound or something, he kind of gives you that tweak and you're like, oh, you know, that could have been bad. Did that a few times yesterday and these supported really well through that. Um, so yeah, I definitely was very impressed by the ankle. Going through the reviews on Patagonia, one of the things I also read was that there's a little bit of wiggle room for a lot of people in their heels. I'm, I'm six foot two, six, six, three on a good day. Um, I've got pretty skinny feet. I'm a skinny guy, buck 80 at 6'2", so I'm skinny. I didn't feel like there was a lot of, I got skinny feet, is what I really should say. I didn't feel like there was a lot of give in my, my heel here. I actually thought the comfort level was phenomenal. Um, my foot is, again, a little skinny, so I did have a little bit of, of gap, just a small bit of gap up here um, in, in the foot pad area of your toes and, and the ball of your foot. But, you know, hiking around and things like that, I thought these were phenomenally um, comfortable. Uh, I really was like, if I wasn't walking around in a soaking wet boot, I thought these would have been like really good hiking shoes. Um, so, you know, just for context, I fished all the way up to, to Reynolds and then hiked back down. Um, so hiked, you know, I think it's roughly like two miles or something and they were phenomenal. Um, no complaints there. Uh, I'd love to get them on a little bit of a, a worse trail, um, which I will shortly, and, and maybe I can do a one-year review next year and, and kind of give some more insights there. But for now, you know, walking around uh, uh, Reynolds on the Madison was, was fantastic. So yeah, I think the ankle support's actually actually pretty good. Um, I think that's a major concern. Maybe you young bucks out there don't don't have that concern, but us older guys, you know, we we need that ankle support, and I actually think it did pretty well in here. Let's see, so now let's talk about traction. Um, touched a little bit uh, about this as I was talking about the boots um, from the get-go. If I look at my old Sims, right, these are like rock solid. Had a really hard time, it was 180 pounds on a, on a good day when I was wet to really get a good traction on this. So I actually ran studs on these. I just removed those um, recently because we're getting a raft and I thought I was gonna have these boots um, before my wife surprised me with these. Um, so I removed those so that I could wear them on the raft and not have to worry about any, you know, scratching or, or damaging the raft. Um, wore these without that, um, that metal on here, those metal cleats, and it was slick. So when I was going to these on the Madison, I was a little bit worried about the slickness. I actually thought they did fantastic. Um, you know, I think no matter what you do when you're waiting around, and felt is actually really good with most most contact services, but you know, felt is not allowed in like Yellowstone National Park, which is just an hour hour away from us. So we do a lot of fishing there. So felt was like a no go for me from the beginning. Um, I also feel like when you're hiking on felt, if you get on any any grass or anything like that, you're gonna slip, you're gonna fall. The times I've worn felt recently, when I was uh, with a buddy on his boat, I. I'm, I had a pretty big bruise on my ass one time for slipping on, on the grass near the river's edge and just, you know, boom. So I like having a rubber sole. I'd love to be, I'd love to put cleats in this, honestly, but because we're gonna get the boat, which is actually, I'm sitting on the boat uh, trailer right here. Should get the boat tomorrow, fingers crossed. Um, if I wasn't gonna get the boat, I would put cleats in these um, probably, but just for the added, added friction, uh, but, all that said, these performed phenomenally yesterday on the Madison. You know, it's it's tough to say that any, you know, you're not gonna stick to anything. You're not Spider-Man out there. So you, you're gonna have to give and take a little bit on the, on, the, on the traction, that's my opinion. But I felt like these did extremely well. Um, you know, what's really nice about these is if you can see, and you can feel it when you're hiking around them, there's a lot of give in the sole. So a lot of cushion. So you're gonna get that bend in here. And this actually is one of the, the problems I have with the boot, which I'll get into in a bit. Um, 
So there's a lot of bend in there, which is really nice when you're hiking around, you're getting that added contact, sur contact surface um, on rocks and things like that. And it's as it drips on me. Uh, these are still wet from yesterday. So, and that's one of the problems I'm gonna get into. So how about wear? <clears throat> so one week of wearing these, um, yesterday I waited for about two miles on the Blackfoot. I waited for about 50 yards, had my kids with me, didn't get a lot of, a lot of action on there. The wear on the Madison yesterday, I, I have a, a few concerns. I mean, obviously, you know, I'm, I'm pretty hard on my stuff. These are like pretty beat up. The leather is a little bit softer. Right, I mean that's is what it is. So the toes have gotten a little bit beat up. When I'm waiting, and I'm, I'm, you know, I've I've said this in my previous videos. So if you watch those, I've I've I apologize, but I'm kind of like a I, I joke around as like a full contact fly fisherman. So when I'm in the river and I'm starting to get in these deeper sections and trying to hit that pool that's just out reach, I dig my toes in between these big rocks. Um, I, I like to pin myself. So if you've ever seen rock climbers when they're kind of like toe jamming or something, right? They're putting their toe in there and they're bending it in these weird ways. So I'm gonna get a lot of wear and tear around my around my toes and my of my boots. And it's gonna be hard to see with the color of the boot and the lighting, but I got some wear and tear in there. Um, this boot's a little bit worse off. Uh, you can see there's some pretty good slices in there. But you know, I think that long term, you know, there's a you've got the leather and then you've got a backing to that leather as well. So I'm not too concerned about wearing through the the um, the toe on this, so no issues there. Um, you know, again, on the Madison yesterday, you're, you're going through these big rocks, you're making contact with the side of the boots. So I did get a few blemishes on some of the metal um, metal pieces here for the lacings. So there's actually like this nice enamel on the top, not enamel, but uh, coating on top of the, the metal, um, I don't know what you call it, metal hardware for the laces here. And it's still underneath there, so I've actually already got a little bit of rusting underneath there, which honestly, I think you're, you're gonna have to expect uh, in a boot, if you're waiting and you're going out there and you're using the boot, you're gonna have wear, you're gonna have tear. Um, and, you know, I, I don't think this is, this is too bad of an issue. Um, maybe if you have waders that are in better condition than mine, uh, that the, the gravel guard's in a better condition, it protects that a little bit better, but, Still, you know, this is pretty low and you still have these casings here. So I think you're gonna get some wear and tear, um, specifically on these eyelets right here. Eyelets, there you go. As far as the leather sides, and you know, I don't really have a lot of concern there. I, I definitely do have some, uh, what do we call this, character on this boot now. Uh, we'll see as it dries out. Um, but yeah, I think, I think I, I don't have a lot of, a lot of um, worry in the durability, but Check back again next summer when I do a one year review and we'll, we'll see where we are there. The soles themselves, the Vibram soles, these look awesome. Um, they hiked really well, the traction was great. I don't have a ton of durability issues there. I mean, it's I, I've, I've waited two miles and hiked two miles. So the expectation would be that this does, the, the sole doesn't show anywhere and it doesn't. So, okay, I guess it passes the one week review test, great. <clears throat> so, what is the one downside of these boots so far? Well, you know, living in Montana and living no, pretty close to Yellowstone National Park, we have a lot of risk of, of uh, traveling aquatic invertebrates, um, right? So in the park and things like that, you're supposed to clean your boots and those things. These cleaned off pretty well, right? The, when I was in the Blackfoot, I got sand all over these, washed them off when I got back. Cleaned off really well, no problems there. But the problem that I have, maybe there's, you know, I'm trying to find something that's wrong with these too. So maybe this isn't very warranted, but the, you know, the, the problem I have with these is that they soak in water in this, this soil in between here, this, this cushiony soil. So if I can try here, let's see if I can, I did it earlier. Maybe I wasted all the good stuff, but I can actually get this thing to drip if I squeeze it enough um, from wearing it yesterday. So, oh man, that's a stiff right there. But, so it does soak some water in. It's it's pretty hard to see, but if you squeeze this hard enough, so there you go, a little bit of water there. There's still water soaked in this from yesterday, which is it a big deal? Maybe. Um, what it means is I'll have to before I go and like fish the Madison and then go back into the park or switch you know river systems in Montana, um, and you should do this in your water too. Um, 
is I'll have to wash this with a, with a beach, bleach solution, which I think a lot of people do that anyways. Um, you know, comment below if, if that's what you do or, or not do. Um, but yeah, you know, that's, that's kind of the main, main problem or, or challenge I see with the boot, but you're gonna have to do that with any boot you have. Like these things don't dry overnight. Um, it is what it is. So in conclusion, you know, I give this boot uh, definitely an A. Uh, it's an expensive boot though, 500 bucks. Like you gotta shell it out for it. But um, I think you're gonna get many, many years of, of service from the boot, especially if you're a casual fly fisherman. So for me, it's, you know, I'm going out uh, in the summertime, you know, once, once a week-ish, um, if, if I'm lucky, maybe three or four times um, in, in the peak of summer when I'm going out in the afternoons after the kids go to sleep. So definitely gonna get years of, of, years of use out of this. Um, I would definitely recommend it if you can shell out the 500 bucks, which again, it's, it's, it's not child's, you know, it's not pennies for, for sure. But yeah, thanks for watching today. I love the support. You know, I've, I've joked around that if I get 25 subscribers, I'll actually buy a computer um, and do video editing of these videos. So you won't have to see me at the end here, click the button uh, and I can maybe like do all my bad, uh, like just right now, take out all my bad sayings and, and put in good sayings instead. But yeah, thanks again for watching guys. I really enjoy doing these gear reviews. Um, hey, if I hit 20 subscribers, maybe I'll get like a nice, place where I can sit down and not have to do this sitting on my raft trailer uh, in the middle of my, my garage. So you can see my nice, my waiter sitting up here, storage rack, these are awesome. Gets everything off the ground. Um, anyways, maybe we can talk about that in another video. Thanks for watching, Amol.